exactly getting any tough coverage over this from the Scottish media. Well, well no. Uh, I mean, it's important. I was watching that clip back again of, of Nicola Sturgeon. What she really means is that it's an outrage that anybody would think to challenge her. Uh, and you know she thinks it's you know she in her opinion anyone that 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 gets in her face and says no uh, is just outrageous and that it's untenable for her it's unimaginable for her that she would be challenged in her position as, as first minister anything she says is supposed to go this constant harping on that she goes on about representing the will of the Scottish people if if you live in Scotland if you talk to Scottish people as I do every day. The vast majority, I've seen figures of 80% of Scottish people are appalled by the gender reform bill. Mm. They absolutely do not want it. They are appalled by it. You know, we've all watched the, the coverage uh, of it going, of its passage through the parliament. Mm. There were last minute amendments tabled that would have at least prevented convicted sex offenders from, you know, using this to identify as women so that they can get into and serve their time in women's jails. Nicola Sturgeon stamped even on that as a last minute amendment. This is just yet another example of Nicola Sturgeon believing that she has the absolute unquestionable right to ram down the throats of Scottish people whatever it is that she wants to do. But now, Neil, she will use this veto by Westminster and Sunak's government, which I celebrate, by the way. I think it shows that maybe Sunak is finally growing a bit of a backbone. But she's going to use this now, isn't she, uh, to try and say that it's proof that Scottish independence is necessary? Oh, I, I, I dare say, uh, you, you know, she will repurpose anything and everything uh, and, and make it into a, a, a weapon that she can use to insist that, you know, the will of the Scottish people has been thwarted. You know, the will of the Scottish people was demonstrated all the way back in 2014 when, you know, when the vote was 55-45 in favour of Scotland remaining in the Union. And, you know, she plainly ignored the will of the Scottish people then. She doesn't, she's not interested in the will of the Scottish people. She has to continually throw red meat to her, her supporters uh, who are in the minority in Scotland. There's never been a majority in Scotland in favour of the policies that Nicola Sturgeon has. That's been demonstrated again and again and again. And yes, of, of course, she'll weaponise it to, to once again, you know, claim that, that, uh, that, that Scotland is the victim here. And, and Scots, the majority of Scots don't feel like victims in this situation, nor in any other. But, you know, the point is... This is what this indicates, Dan, is bigger than Nicola Sturgeon, bigger than the Scottish Parliament. This is yet another example of politicians who are drunk on the power that they obtained during the last couple of years, determined that they can change our lives in every way, in any way, change our lives fundamentally forever. You know, here's Nicola Sturgeon and her, her determination to introduce this gender reform bill. But look at the wider picture, the Westminster government. Look at us being herded towards, you know, net zero, 15 minute cities, uh, you know, giving up on uh, fossil fuel cars, having to buy yeah. electric vehicles as though that's going to work. This is just a yet another example of, oh, of politicians course. who are out of control and, the and ignoring the, the, public opinion. Absolutely. But, but Neil, that's the macro level, right? If we just look at this on the micro level, uh, Sturgeon is the one who is politicising the plight of trans people. Uh, it was fascinating to see Debbie Hayton, a, a prominent trans woman, interviewed by Lawrence Fox just, just before my show started. And she said... Before Sturgeon started this type of thing, we were just able to get along with our lives. And actually, it's the hard left who want to politicise trans people. And I just think it is a disgrace. Yeah, we, you and I, Dan, have, have, have shared back and forth the idea that, you know, it's never about what they say it's about. Yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> Debbie Hayton made remarks that, you know, that... Um, that, that she was, uh, you know, you know, they were going about their lives quietly. Trans people were going about their lives quite quietly. Now they've been kind of hijacked by activists. The activists don't really care about trans people. It's just another opportunity to weaponize another group of people to further a broad spectrum agenda, which is to change everybody's life in this country. Yep. You know, and the and as, as Strip said, away our the, the activists will move. The activists will move on, leaving the. I'm sure the vast majority of the trans. Uh, 
uh, community in, in Britain, you know, floundering in the in the in the boiling pot that's been created by all of the strife that need never have happened. And yes, Nicola Sturgeon, as she always does, has just latched on to another opportunity, you know, to batter Westminster to go after Conservatives, to go after the the British Union. That is all that she's ever been about.